Welcome back everybody. So this is our second video in our two part understanding about mechanisms. If you didn't get to watch the first video, please go and give that a watch now. So this week we're going to learn about CAMs and linkages and how they're used. And we're going to understand how to calculate the maths involved in pulleys systems and gear trains and learn about those as well. So last week we were looking at types of motion. So pause it, have a think. Okay, let's go through. So motion in a straight line indefinitely was linear. Good. Back and forth motion is reciprocating. Motion in a circle is rotary motion. And motion in an arc is the slightly tricky oscillating. Well done. And we also looked at systems, uh, mechanical systems, right? Systems approach. So here we were looking at this young lady who is riding a bike and also Steve trying to reel in a fish. So in a bicycle, we have force applying to the, to the pedals, our input. Our process is the gear system that's involved. That's very appropriate for today. And the output, of course, is the rear wheel moving in order to propel the bike. Steve's trying to reel in this fish, so he is turning the handle in a rotary motion. The process is the reel rotating as well, which is drawing back the line, and the output, of course, is drawing the fish out of the water. I'm going to start with CAM today. This is the more simple of the different types of mechanism, and hopefully you have some familiarity from previous projects you may have done, like this little CAM toy. So CAMs uh, change rotary motion on the axle to reciprocating motion in the follower. So here is our cam, our circular cam. Here's our axle or shaft. And the follower is a vertical uh, line that goes up. And of course, it'll have something connected to it, like our little chickens here. And then an action will happen. By changing the size or the shape of the cam, you'll change the magnitude of the output motion in the follower. And here are some examples. Before we get to the names, I'd like you to have a little look at the follower and the motion that it's doing. So for number one, this smooth up and down motion is an eccentric cam. Now, the reason it's called an eccentric cam is because a regular cam has the axle right dead center, but this one is off center. So when we talk about somebody being a little bit eccentric, we mean that they're a little bit, um, you know, they, they kind of beat to their own drum, right? They, their own little bit special, a little bit different. So that's what we mean by an eccentric cam. So it's off center. For number two, it's moving up fairly slowly and then drops down quickly. So this is our snail cam, so called because it looks just like a snail shell. Number three is moving up and down quite quickly, unlike the eccentric cam. That's a pear cam. I wonder why it's called that. <laughs> and then number four is sort of moving up and down very quickly. It's almost sort of jumping around. So that is because it's from a star cam also known as a four lobed cam, just like your earlobe. A lobe is an extension of a, of a part. So cams have some really important uses in industry, mainly as cam shafts, i.e. a number of cams on a shaft or an axle. So they're really important in the use for engine blocks and they work in conjunction with the pistons. And here is an extremely large camshaft. So this, this person is standing on top of it. This is used in a cruise liner. Now, not quite as large as the last one, but in this short snippet of this video that I've got for you, it shows another really large camshaft. It's being removed and replaced with a brand new one. And it takes about a dozen engineers an entire day. Very cool little clip. Let's get on to linkages. So these consist of a series of levers that make things move in a particular way. We have two main types, push-pull linkages and bell cranks. So push-pull linkages look a bit like this. And here's our bell crank. Now they have different names. So this push-pull linkage is called a reverse motion linkage because if you have the input comes in, the opposite output occurs. And this one's called a parallel motion linkage for fairly obvious reasons. And then here's our little bell crank. So when we use linkages in industry, we have a number of different uses. 
but it could be something really simple like this mirror that extends out but actually if you were to change that so it becomes a vertical motion that's actually the the similar kind of um, movement that's used in cherry pickers right so to uh, gain height alongside a building my first thought is always to trains you can see how smoothly that moves or it could even be a windshield wiper just like this one it have to be Arnold of course and then this is what they actually look like so it's attached to a rotary cam as well and then the best example of a bell crank is to uh, is in a brake device in a bicycle. Now, linkages must involve a fixed pivot and a floating pivot. So a fixed pivot attaches a moving part to an unmoving part. A floating pivot attaches one moving to another moving part. When we tend to make these in card, for instance, we use split pins for these pivot points. So here's a few examples of some simple linkages we can make in card. So in A, if we uh, move the input inwards, it moves the output outwards. If we move the input inwards in B, the output moves inwards as well. You can actually combine the two together so that they work in conjunction with one another. For challenging linkages, you could make yourself a reverse motion linkage, just like we've seen. You could make yourself a bell crank, like we've also seen or even this slightly complicated one. You can see here a few examples of the kinds of motions or little cartoony effects that you can get from the different types of motion. And also here I have a short video for you, which is just amazing. So this is about a Dutch engineer's uh, amazing line of, uh, they're called strand beasts. So basically beach animals and they come alive in the wind. Uh, definitely worth a watch, very entertaining. Now let's talk about pulleys, and here's an example for you. So pulleys consist of a wheel in which it has a groove that a belt or a rope sits inside, so it's not going to move up the sides. Now one pulley doesn't give you any kind of mechanical advantage, and by that we mean that it's not going to really help you. You might as well just lift it yourself. But what we do is we actually combine pulleys. So we can put them in a system of two, three, more, and that changes the magnitude of the force, basically making whatever you're trying to lift feel a lot lighter. So when you have one fixed and one moving pulley, like this one down here, so this is called a block and tackle. Now, how much equivalent weight do you think having two pulleys would equal? So is it gonna be twice as much? half as much, one quarter as much, or one eighth as much? Well, the answer is half as much. If you had three pulleys working together, it would be a third as much, and so on. So pulleys can be assembled into systems called belt drives, which are really important, not only in engines and goods like washing machines, but also our pillar drill that we discussed last week. That changes the rotary motion in the motor to a rotary motion in the drill bit, but at a different pace. And in fact, having pulleys of different sizes changes the speed, which is super useful, just like in our pillar drill. We need to be able to do some simple maths to help us calculate it. So in order to calculate the output speed, what we need to know is the speed of the driver wheel over the velocity ratio. And you might be thinking, well, how do I know the velocity ratio? That's why we need to input this other little formula, and that is equal to the driven wheel diameter over the driver wheel diameter. So let's have a look at a question. So in this question, a pulley belt drive consists of a driver wheel, which has a 30 millimeter diameter, and a driven wheel of a 90 millimeter diameter. The driver wheel rotates at 600 RPM. That stands for revolutions per minute. We want to calculate the output speed of the driven wheel. So now that we can see the picture, let's apply the information that we can know. So we can look at the diameters, and of course one's quite a lot bigger than the other. So we can work out that the driver wheel is the smaller one, the 30 millimeter, and the driven is the larger. So, and we also know that the driver is moving at 600 RPM. Let's input the information into our document. 
So here we have the output speed. So what do we know already? Well, the speed of the driver wheel is 600 RPM. And then we want to divide it by the velocity ratio, but we don't know that yet. So let's input that now. So what do we know here? Well, we know the driven wheel diameter. The driven wheel is 90. Divided by the driver wheel diameter, which is 30. Now we can do a bit of simple maths. There we go. Let's get rid of that. Three goes into three once. Three goes into three. Uh, into nine, sorry, three times. So the answer is three. So if we have 600 divided by three, three goes into three once, into six twice. So the answer is 200 RPM. Make sure you have the units or you won't get the mark. So pulleys and gears have some similarities, but also some differences. So gears have teeth that interlock. You can see that evident from the pictures. And also, it changed the direction of motion. So in our pulley system, if our driver wheel is moving clockwise, it causes our driven wheel to also be clockwise. In our gear, however, if this gear is turning anti-clockwise, it causes its partner to turn clockwise. Now, this is an example of a gear train because any more than two or more gears is a gear train. So this two gear train we've sorted. Now look at the three gear train. So if this first one is moving clockwise, its partner is going to be moving anti-clockwise. And that causes the last one to move clockwise again. Now this one in the middle is in fact called an idler gear. And it's often used because you literally just want to continue that direction of motion. So similar to pulleys, Different sized gears change the magnitude of the input force. So we can also do some maths for this. So it's going to look really similar. So the output speed is equal to the speed of the driver wheel over the gear ratio. Well, how do we work out the gear ratio? We can use this formula. It's equal to the number of teeth on the driven wheel over the number of teeth on the driver. And I have, if it helps, a little memory aid for you as well. If we have a convertible car that looks like this, and we have it facing us like here, we put a line across it, where well, we have the people in the back, we are being driven by the person in the front, which is the driver. So the gear ratio is equal to driven over driver, if it helps. But let's have a go at a question. A gear train consists of a driver wheel with 10 teeth and a driven wheel with 20. The driver wheel rotates at 500 RPM. Calculate the output speed for the driven wheel. So we know that the driver is going to be the smaller with the 10 teeth and the driven with the larger with 20. And we know that the RPM is 500. So let's input the information just like we did before. So we know that the speed of the driver wheel is given to us and that's 500 RPM. The velocity ratio, well, how do we work that out? Well, if we remember from before, it's driven over driver. So 20 divided by 10 is 2. Hey, look at that, super easy. So 500 divided by 2, you can probably work it out for yourself, or we could do 2 into 500. That's going to be 2 goes in twice, 1 down. There we go. So it's 250. And what's our unit? RPM. Easy peasy. Lots of use for gears in industry, not just things like can openers and bike chains, and not just for things like our pillar drills. Here's our wreck and pinion. We've got watches as well, and we had our lovely bat from last week, but also things like uh, wind turbines. So that is the motion of the, of the blades actually uh, turning the generator, and that's what creates electricity. If you're interested any more, have a look at this amazing video. Recap. Cams change rotary to reciprocating motion using engines and toys. And these are the ones we looked at. Linkages are a series of levers. And we looked at push-pull linkages and bell cranks. These offer mechanical advantage, lightening loads. Gear, gears are toothed wheels and change direction of motion. Two or more make a gear train. And we can use mathematical formulae to determine speeds. Well done, guys. And uh, catch you next time.